What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part seven of the Phoenix model Spitfire to Reno Racer conversion, AKA one of a kind. So we are going to start on the servos in this video. We're gonna go ahead and get the aileron flap servos done and mounted. We're gonna get the elevator and rudder servo in mount the ESC, start with the electronic part of the video and of the build. And we still have to add, as you've seen in part six, like I said, we still have to add the black and green trim. We will do that. I'm not sure if we'll do it in this video or the last part, but it will be done before the airplane is finished. I want to take a break from the covering and the decals and the paintwork, and I want to get some servos mounted. I want to get this thing ready to fly. It's so close, but so far. Well, not really maybe another video or two and this thing will be done. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get all the servos, get everything ready, and I will be back to explain what servos I'm using on what. So I'll be back. All right, so I got my servos laid out here. So for the rudder, we're just gonna go with a JRDS821 elevator, of course, high-tech 645 metal gear. Ailerons are the same, 645 metal gears. Flaps, we're just going to run some HS825 ball bearings. Of course, sir, change the servo horns. Those are just what was on there. And for the retract, they're going to go with a JR Sport retract 88 servo. So these are our servos, what I had laying around. I'm a huge high-tech person, as you can tell. I have a bunch of 645 metal gears. These servos are honestly great servos. Pretty cheap. You know, they think they're $30 a piece for the amount of torque reliability you get i've never had a 645 fail me so i run the 645s and everything on my ailerons and elevator i could technically put one on the rudder but it's a waste i could put them on the flaps i have a bunch more but it's a waste so we'll just go with the 425s on the flaps 625 or 645s on the ailerons and 645 on the elevator and just an 821 for the rudder all you need so we're gonna go ahead pull the wing back off and we're pull the cowling back off and we're going to start with the aileron servos and get those mounted so we'll be back in a second all right i got you guys rigged back up here i really need to get a tripod but anyway so i just took some of this vinyl back like cardboard thick paper and i folded into a square now the reason why i do this first you look, we got our servos here, high tech 645s, these are the aileron servos. You'll notice the little brass inserts. Now, something that drives me crazy is I see people put them in the other way. So they take this little insert here and they will stick it in this side. Hold on one second. Okay, and this is the way people think that it should be done. And that is wrong. It needs to go this way. Now, the reasoning, when you screw down with your screw, this way, let's grab a screw here. We're gonna be using these two millimeter Allen screws. Okay, it creates a washer, but as you tighten this down, it digs the little metal backing here into the wood and it doesn't allow the servo to move like it should. So, let's rotate this back around real quick. Okay, so now this is the way, the proper way to mount the servo grommets. So now your servo goes through here, your screw. This locks it down, this little lip right here is what holds against the wood and allows the servo to oscillate and move on the rubber like it is designed to do so now let's set that aside we have our little paper here okay we have our servo cover what i like to do is fold your paper up take your servo mount it in here okay now push your paper so you have a gap now what you're looking for is that gap right there. The reason why you want a gap is because when you push this down, screw it into place, you remove that paper and now you're gonna have a perfect gap in between the top of the servo and the wood hatch. And that allows the servo when it's tightened to be able to again, oscillate on that rubber grommet. And that is what it's designed to do to absorb vibrations. You don't want the servo all the way up against this plywood. Like if you take this out, and you push the servo all the way up, you don't have a gap. And now the servo is tight with this, so on a nitro or a gasoline engine airplane, you'll get servo failure, because the servo can't vibrate. So you have vibration of the airframe, 
servo can move on the grommets. So we're just going to use a one and a half millimeter drill bit like this right here. It'll focus, focus. All right, it doesn't want to focus, but one and a half millimeter drill bit. We're gonna take our paper again, push it up in here, take our servo, push that up like this, push it up tightly. You want a nice tight servo and we're just going to simply drill. And we're gonna do that on all four corners. And now, when we take our paper out, we have our servo holes drilled. Of course, go back through. I like to put a drop of thin CA on all the holes, even though this is hardwood, it hardens it up. And now, when we screw the servo down, we will have the perfect amount of gap in between the servo and the door. So there's a little tip for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get these screwed in and I'll be back. We're pre-drilling all of our screws, running our screws in again, two millimeter servo screws all the way around. I like them, they're nice and clean looking. Here, we're making our servo extensions. I prefer to make my own servo extension as it is cheaper. You buy the kit, get yourself a good crimper. I think it was around $50 on Amazon for everything. Make your life a whole lot easier. All right, so we got the flap servos and aileron servos in. As you can tell from the time lapse, we ran or we made uh, all new servo wires for the ailerons. So right there, we used some 22 gauge wire, crimped on and winds. This wing is the same, flap servo, aileron servos are done. So now it is time to do all the push rods and glue the control surfaces. So I went ahead and made up the push rods, just put it at the push rod in my drill and run it into the clevises. So I like to do them halfway. So that way I have plenty of threads on both sides for adjustment. I do Z bins on the end because I don't like the little 90s or the little set connect things that you can use. So I just Z bend, they never fail. So I got all the parts lined up here. We got our push rods, we got our screws. Longer screws are for the ailerons because it's a really thick area. And then I went ahead and I painted, just threw a quick coat of paint black on these here and silver on these. So these will be for the ailerons and flaps. The black is so when the flaps are down, it all matches inside. So silver on top, black on the bottom, and silver and silver. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. Uh, this is really a simple process. There's really nothing to it, but of course, you know, putting your clevis on, lining it up with your push rod. I use a T-pen, which is right here, and I just, after I get the push rod on, I line it up, use a T-pen. This is another thing too, make sure. So you see the holes in the clevis? All right, well, when this is pushed all the way up, the holes in the clevis need to be over the hinge line. So you don't want them back here. You don't want it up here. You want the holes in the, the not clevis, control horn, sorry. The holes in the control horn need to be dead over, centered over the, the control gap. So that way it is the, the perfect amount of geometry. So always remember when you're installing the control horns to make sure your holes in the horns are over your hinge line, not back or forward. So that's just a little tip. And then of course, make sure that they are straight. So if you can tell the aileron servo is on an angle. So when we go to put the push rod and clevis on, we will follow that angle. And then again, you know, it can be on an angle, but as long as the control horn holes are over the hinge line, we are good to go. So we're gonna get that done, flaps, ailerons, and then I'll be back with a tip on gluing your CA hinges. Okay, so we got the push rods and control horns all done. As you can see here, we are over center. We got our screws in, we got our Z bins done. So a little tip for you guys. When you are doing your push rods, so now if you look here, we have a nice clean push rod. I had a guy on one video ask me about slop. So there is zero slop. If I can get this to focus here, hold on, let me try to set it like this. We have a super tight hole. 
no slop at all. And we do that on all of our push rods. Again, zero slop. Nice, tight control surface. Smooth, but tight. Good tip for you. When you are doing your push rods, I like to take a piece of the push rod I'm going to be using. You can do it whatever length you want. I cut it with a pair of side bites, dykes, whatever you guys want to call them. If it will focus. And basically just cut it to a point and use it as a drill bit. And I will literally just drill my hole and make it so that it is the exact same size as the push rod. Now it's really tight to get the push rod in, but that gives you a slop free control surface. Now, if another little tip, if you have a, like a hole too big and you have a little slop in the push rod, you can always take some medium CA and glue the actual push rod to the servo horn. Put yourself a drop down inside of here. Of course, take your push, your clevis off, break the push rod free. That'll give you a perfect space. Get rid of the slop, you're good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rig the camera up and I'm gonna show you about epoxying the wings together. So give me a second, let me get the camera rigged up and I'll be back. All right, so we got the wing halves here, got the camera rigged up. Now we are going to be using my epoxy of choice this is a Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy. I like 30 minute epoxy. The longer the cure time, the better. So I'm going to go ahead and take my X-Acto knife. And what I like to do is I like to just go and mark up the wood. So I'll just go through like this and just cut me a bunch of slots all throughout this rip and then I go the other way just marking up the wood I like to do this all over you can see here and of course go back go sideways just mark it all up real good work our way this way again put us some marks with the exacto blade now the reason why i am doing this this allows for a stronger and better glue joint it's a little tip uh my good buddy old nitro al taught me many years ago now this will give you a incredibly strong glue joint sorry i had you off the camera for a second so now if you can see here so we have just a bunch of cuts in it. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our second panel here. Set this one aside and we wanna do the same with this one. Same thing. We wanna start and we just wanna go through like this and we just wanna mark up as we go. Nice, just mark it all up. So the way that the epoxy works is it seeps in. The reason why you want a longer cure is so it has more time to seep into the balsa wood, plywood, whatever wood you're cutting. It seeps into the pores. So when you mark this up, now you are giving a much more area for the glue to bond to. So this is just what I like to do. You don't have to go crazy here. I just go ahead and just mark it all up. All right, so now we have our halves marked up. You can see all the cuts. It doesn't have to be perfect or measured or pretty. Now we're marked up on both wing halves. And now we are ready to glue together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the epoxy mixed up real fast. Again, we're just using 30 minute Bob Smith Slow Cure. I got us a couple tubes or a couple uh, mixing cups. Just, I buy these by the hundred. And then just a regular old popsicle stick, an epoxy brush, as well as rubbing alcohol, of course, some paper towels for cleanup. 
I'll explain that in a second. So I'm gonna go mix this epoxy up real quick and then I'll be right back. All right, so I'm just mixing up the epoxy real quick. I already mixed it off camera, but uh, real quick, make sure when you're mixing your epoxy that you scrape all along the edges. So that way you get everything really good. And I just made a mess with my epoxy. But yeah, you wanna make sure you get all along the edges so you get the epoxy really good. Have yourself paper towels handy. You're going to need them. So we're gonna grab a wing half. Now I'm gonna to try to do this on camera, which is gonna probably be a little tricky. But yeah, grab yourself a wing half. And what I like to do first is I start with the tube itself and I will go around, smear the epoxy in the tube. I like to always mix up more than I'm going to need. So you see, I'm getting it down in the tube. I hope it's focusing for you. Okay, so get it down into the tube. Now that we got it in the tube, we're gonna take our epoxy and then just spread it everywhere. Having too much epoxy is okay. Have yourself rubbing alcohol ready. Rubbing alcohol will take the epoxy away. When you push the wing halves together, you want it to splooge out. You want there to be excess. You don't want to mix just enough epoxy. You want it to have a good amount of epoxy. You can always clean the excess off with rubbing alcohol. I hope you guys can see this. This is definitely a lot harder than I expected it to be with filming. I really need to get an overhead camera or something rigged up. But I'm still learning how to do all this filming stuff. So I want to take it, like I said, get it all nice and mixed up. We want the epoxy everywhere. We want this everywhere. Uh, hold on, I made a mess. Sorry, again, have your rubbing alcohol ready. Make sure you... Keep your fingers clean of the epoxy because you can get it onto your your glue or your covering and you really don't want that. So now we're gonna take our tube and we're gonna spin it as we push down. Now remember on the first video, I talked about there being a lot of slop in the tube. The epoxy eliminates that. So now we're going to try to hold this Ooh, I have the wing pinched between my legs right now while I'm trying to do this for you. For you guys, this is definitely my first time gluing a wing together on video. So we're going to just continue pushing the epoxy. Again, we want way more than we're going to need. Just going to push it around. When we glue this wing together, you'll see you're going to want the epoxy to splooge out. If the epoxy does not splooge out, it's simple. You do not have enough in the joint. I would rather waste a little bit and make sure I have a very strong glued together wing than not have enough epoxy because that is not good. You don't get a good glue joint. Your wing is weak, even though technically there's a tube, but you can still not have a good joint and break your wing. So now I like to take it and just run the epoxy. Now this is why I have a brush. So now, sorry guys, I take my brush and I want to brush this tube together. Or not together, but I wanna brush the epoxy all over this tube. So that way, when I go to push the wing halves together, okay, so we got a good amount of epoxy laid around. Again, this is being very difficult. So now we're going to go ahead, and if you look on the wing here, we had a little bit splooge over, and that's okay. Epoxy or rubbing alcohol takes it right off. So now we're going to take our other half of the wing and we are going to push this together. Now I want you to watch while this wing goes together. There's going to be a lot of epoxy that's going to run out and that is okay. 
Have yourself a paper towel ready. You can see it's running right now. Just go ahead, wipe it, flip the wing around. You can see we have epoxy running out. Go ahead and wipe it. Now you're gonna need lots of, of paper towels. And at first, you're not trying to get it clean, but you're just trying to wipe the excess. We can worry about cleaning it later. So now we're gonna go ahead and push. Now, if you look, we got epoxy pushed out all through here. So let's go ahead and wipe that. It looks really nasty right now. Sorry guys, let me grab another paper towel. All right. So now we got all of our epoxy pushing out and you kind of got to work quickly even though it's 30 minutes. So now we're gonna go ahead, take our rubbing alcohol, spray our paper towel, and we will go ahead and wipe this. And then we'll come back like this. Once the epoxy dries, you have no hope at getting it off. But when the epoxy, before the epoxy dries, you can get a really nice and clean glue joint. Spray your paper towel again. We'll start back here. We'll get that little bit off down here. And then we'll just go ahead, work our way forward. If you wanted to, you could also uh, tape off your two halves. That would allow you to, um, that would allow you to peel the tape when you're done. I like doing it this way. I feel like I get a better, a cleaner glue joint because even when you peel the tape, you still uh, you still have some residue. So I just go ahead, do that all the way down. So now I have a perfect glue joint. I have a clean glue joint. You guys can see that. It is clean, it is perfect and the wing is now glued together. So I'm gonna hurry up and tape this all together and I'll be back. All right, so we are going to take our thin CA. Again, Bob Smith is my favorite glue. You can use whatever you like. We are going to glue our, glue our hinges, sorry. So I have already done this, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your hinge is going straight. You could take a T-pin to hold metal while you push your control surfaces. So we have our hinges, all of them are in perfectly straight like they should be. Now, we're gonna to wanna to take and push our control surface up tight against the area, up against the trailing edge. We wanna look for our hinge. So our hinge is going to be down in here and we will just wanna squeeze some glue down in there. So you guys can see that, it's gonna be very hard. So we wanna look for our hinge and then just squeeze some glue down in there. And we wanna do the same over here look for our hinge and squeeze some glue down in there now we did the top side now of course with our flap we're going to want to make sure that it is centered like it should be it is pushed flat up against like it should be everything is good again we want to look for our hinge which is right here and just get some glue now you're going to want to come back through and sometimes it can drip out so be careful about that because you don't want to get glue on the covering if you do that is okay because you can get yourself some uncure just like i did there take yourself a paper towel real quick all right so we're just going to take our paper towel we're just going to wipe it whatever excess we have we'll come back later with some uncure and we'll get that out so now we have the tack surface of our control surface. Now, if you noticed, I have all the clevises off. I have the clevises off for the reason of when we're done gluing all of our control surfaces, we're gonna wanna make sure, I'm just gonna wipe all the excess glue off of this bottle. We're gonna wanna make sure that the control surfaces are free because you do not want to go ahead, glue all your hinges and then you go to break your hinges free and your SOL, you mess the servo up if you're using plastic gear. I don't have to worry about that. 
So again, we're flush up here. We're gonna go ahead, get some glue down in our hinges. And now we just had this one move, so let's quickly push it back. We are good to go. Get some glue down our hinges, and we just had it drip out again. This capillary tube sucks. I'm probably gonna take it off so I don't keep dripping covering, but we'll go back through with some of this stuff right here. This is called Uncure. This stuff will take that off, no problem. So I always keep this just in case for that reason. But anyway, so we go ahead and we glue all our hinges just like this. And when I'm done gluing them, I'll come back and show you to make sure that they're all free. So let me finish gluing these and then I'll be back. All right, so I went ahead and finished gluing all the control surfaces, all the hinges. So I glue bottom first and then top is my way to do it. Now you wanna make sure that you move your control surfaces. The reason why you take your push rods off so you can move everything. Make sure they're not stuck. Make sure they're nice and solid. Pull on them, move them. So now we know everything is nice and broken free. We know our control surfaces move freely like they should, but they're tight, pull on them, give them a pull. Pull on everything. Now we're done with this. So now we can go ahead and hook our push rods back up. So we're gonna go ahead and hook these up now on all of them, and then we're gonna start on the retracts. I personally do not pin my CA hinges. That is user preference. I have never had a control surface pull out. If you get enough glue down in there, you will not have to worry about it. Also, there is a glue spot right here. This debonder is fantastic, uncure. If you guys are building with any kind of CA on an airplane, get yourself a bottle. This is a one ounce bottle I bought probably five years ago. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. It will take the CA right off the covering. Little tip for you. So now we are going to get the retracts mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead, hook all the control horns back up, or push rods back up to the control horns, and then we'll start with the retracts. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm working on the retracts and something I wanted to touch on really quick. I have two servos here. We have a high tech 75 ball bearing servo a bit of focus, and then we have a JR RT88 retract servo. So now this is the servo I originally was going to use. As you can tell, I got everything rigged up, I got everything set. Then I decided to open up the manual and I read something real quick. So if you can notice here, it says that from center hole to our quick connect, we need 12 millimeters. Center hole to quick connect, 12 millimeters. Now the purpose of this is for the travel of the retract. With the push rod hooked up, as the servo goes into the wing here, as you can tell, I have to make this a little bigger for the servo to fit. I don't know what servo is made to go in here, but the retract servo is much bigger than whatever. I, apparently, they're using a full, a regular servo. I don't know. But we want a retract servo because the retract servo travels 180 degrees where a regular servo does not. So I went ahead and these are the only servo horns that I have for the JR servo and i went through and i have boxes of servo horns it's all i had with these round ones and then regular horns so i measured from i i built this already before i read that we need 12 millimeters so i measured from center hole to here and we only have like seven and a half millimeters for, to the farthest hole so i went ahead dug through my servo box and i had a couple of these high-tech 75 retract servos as an old servo came out of something i don't know but if you notice on these servo horns, now I have, I use a lot of high tech servos, so I have a bunch of servo horns. If you notice something, we have a little dial indicator here. Seven, eight, 10, 12 with a hole, 13 and a half, 15. You notice we have a bunch of different holes here. So we are interested in that 12 millimeter hole right there. And I use the micrometer to verify. So from center hole to that hole is 12 millimeters. And from center screw hole to that hole is 12 millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and transfer everything off of this servo. And then we will put it onto this servo. And then I'm going to cut that out for it to clear and then I'll be back. All right, so we got the servo mounted. High tech 75 ball bearing retract servo. We got the quick connect set on the horns and the screws just on there everything is loose for the horn uh, just tested the servo to make sure it works we ran the wires up and throughout this hole of course when we go to make our wing connectors we'll tuck everything nice and neatly but 
So now we are going to flip the wing over and we are going to start installing our retracts. So I just went ahead and made up the push rod real quick. We got to get this slid into place and we are going to of course use our one and a half millimeter drill bit just to pre-drill our holes and we'll come back with a little bigger bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get the retracts put in place, pre-drill all the holes, get them screwed down, and then I'll be back with how to do the push rods. All right. So the gear doors are mounted. They are done. I ended up using some E6000 and glued, put a bead on the strut body itself, and then pushed the gear doors on, zip tied around the supplied screw holes on both of them. They're very strong. They shouldn't go anywhere. Hopefully they don't break right here because this is where the glue stops, is right where my finger is. So we'll see how they hold up. If we have to, we can make some fiberglass ones down the road. Inside of the gear doors are green, just like the picture. I tried to make this airplane look as much like the picture as possible. We got the struts painted black, wheel wells black. We've seen all that. Aileron, flap servos done, ran, push rods done, hinges glued. The wing is pretty much finished. Uh, the only other thing left on the wing is the black on the top of the wing. We'll do that later. But I'm going to have to end part seven off here. This video is already going to be around 30 some odd minutes long. So it's more than long enough. I try to keep these at 20 minutes, but there was just so much that I wanted to share with you guys. I couldn't do it. So gear up. Gear down. Of course, they lock up and down. Put them up. And they are locked. Again, we're going to have to adjust those screws so they don't have that little bit of play in them. But we'll adjust all that out. But there you guys go. Wing is pretty much completely finished. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to end part 7 off here. Take care. Have a great day.